The following program is a production of Truth for the World. The book of Job is designed to show, hey, number one, you're going to have trouble, you're going to have trials. Job had many trials. Then we find, we can learn about how he dealt with them. And we can also learn that uh, Jehovah God is uh, very much aware of what we're going through and he will be with us. It's always a great pleasure to speak on the subject of Job and uh, the book of Job. And so if you will, turn uh, to the uh, book of Job in the Old Testament. And we want to notice some preliminary uh, things about uh, Job at this hour, and then we will notice some other things uh, as the meeting progresses. But uh, notice that chapter 1, verse 1 in the book of Job says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And uh, that man was perfect and upright, one that feared God and turned away from evil. I'm using the American standard of 1901. Job was a real-life historical character. And uh, Job was a patriarch in my firm conviction and after years of study. The book of Job uh, can be characterize, characterized as a, one of the poems of suffering and faith. And God was uh, proud of Job. He was a great man. Now, we stated that Job was a real life historical character, and he was. Uh, Job, one persecuted actually lived. There are the modernist uh, positions on the book of Job that Job uh, evolved. Job was not a real person. Job is kind of an analogy of uh, other things. For instance, there's some that say that uh, Job represents the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel... Uh, in Palestine, uh, actually the southern kingdom, Judah, uh, had much. Uh, it was very rich in heritage and history and power, but it lost it all. It went into captivity. And they say that, uh, they try to say that Job represented Israel. Israel was very rich, it was powerful. Uh, and then uh, the southern kingdom, Judah, but uh, it was carried into Babylonian captivity. Job was rich, then he lost everything, and uh, was captive to his disease and uh, lack of possessions. They were taken away. He was abandoned by his friends and family and uh, falsely accused and this type of thing. And then afterward, he was restored. So Israel was restored uh, eventually after 70 years of captivity to uh, Palestine. And so they say, well, Job wasn't a real-life historical person, but it was just analogous to the nation of Israel back in the Old Testament. Uh, it was blessed by God, destroyed, and then blessed again. Well, uh, of course, there are a lot of problems with this. Uh, number one, uh, Job was persecuted because of his righteousness, not because of his wickedness. The nation of Israel was taken into captivity because of its wickedness, not because of its righteousness. And then it was uh, restored, but uh, it never was, uh, Israel was, never, was never was restored to its former place. Never again had a king when it returned. Never again had its glory that it had uh, earlier. But when Job was restored, 
Well, uh, he, everything that he had was doubled, as you know, chapter 42 of the book of Job. But uh, Job was a real-life historical person. And we see that from verse 1, for instance. There was a man who, in the land of Uz whose name was Job. Now, Uz was, uh, is not to be confused with Ur of Chaldees. Uz was in uh, the area of, uh, that was northeast of Palestine. And so uh, this was a different area. Job was from there. It wasn't in the desert that it was east of Palestine, but it was over uh, c closer to the desert and a little north <coughs> east of Palestine. And so uh, he was from the land of us. Notice that his name was Job, and the name uh, Job, of course, is found uh, very early, and we'll discuss that uh, in a moment. In Ezekiel chapter 13, uh, 14, verses 14 through 20, Ezekiel is writing between the second carrying away into Babylon and the third carrying away into Babylon. <clears throat> Ezekiel is a priest. Ezekiel is a prophet. And... Uh, the situation in Judah was so terribly bad, wicked, <clears throat> that he names three persons, Ezekiel uh, 14, 14 and following. He said if Job and Daniel and Noah were in it, by their righteousness they could save only themselves. Now I want to ask you, was uh, Noah a real-life historical person? Indeed he was. And of course he built the ark and uh, saved his family uh, from the universal flood of Genesis uh, uh, 6 through 8. And so uh, he was a real-life historical person. Well, was Daniel a real-life historical person? Yes, he was. He was taken into Babylon in the first carrying away and uh, that was in 605, 606 B.C. Here is Ezekiel writing between 597 and 586 B.C. Okay? And so Daniel was living at the very time that Ezekiel wrote. He was in the king's palace and uh, th there with the, uh, in Babylon. And he was serving as a prime minister uh, under the king, as it were, of uh, Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar. So Noah was a real-life historical person, and Daniel was a real-life historical person, actually living at the time that Ezekiel wrote. And then Job. Well, Job must have been a real-life historical person, and he was. He actually lived. Then we can go over to James, if you will. Turn over to the book of James. And James talks about uh, Job and characterizes him as a real-life historical person. <clears throat> Notice uh, James 5, verse 10. Take, brethren, for an example of suffering and of patience, the prophets who sp spake in the name of the Lord. All right, he's talking about the prophets. They were examples, are examples, of suffering and of patience or endurance. Behold, we call them blessed that endured. Okay? And so they were blessed because they uh, hung in there. They were faithful even in the face of great tribulation and trouble. Now notice also, ye have heard of the patience or the endurance of Job and have seen the full end of the Lord. Now sometimes people wonder, well, what is the book of Job about? Uh, about whom is it written? And here we see the ultimate aim of the book of Job. All right? Ye have heard of the patience endurance of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. 
how that the Lord is full of pity and merciful. In other words, full of mercy. So God is full of pity and full of mercy. And so we need to remember, and if we're going to understand the book of Job, this is one of the things uh, that, needs, uh, that need to be uppermost in our minds, and that is that the book of Job is not only about the suffering and the greatness of, and the endurance of Job, but it is also about the greatness and the mercy and the pity of Jehovah God. And so we'll, we'll try to emphasize that as we go uh, along. And so Job was a real live historical person. And there's much we can learn from the book of uh, Job about Job himself, about mankind, and about God. The book of Job is uh, universal in, in the sense that it is for all men in all ages because each one of us is a human being and human beings often go through struggles and persecutions and trials and difficulties. And how often do we see uh, what James uh, 1.12 says, that every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. In other words, he's dependable. Every good and every perfect gift is from Jehovah God. But then also we see in the book of Job that the devil takes away. God gives, Satan takes away. And uh, we need to keep that in mind in the book of Job. We'll see that very often in the book. Now, Job never realizes that throughout the whole book. It's interesting. Uh, he thinks God took everything away. But the truth about the matter is that Satan took his possessions away. And so we realize that when we uh, notice the book because later on when it was written, then we see uh, what happens in heaven here between Satan and God. We see in the third scene uh, what happens between uh, God and Satan. And Job was not aware of that, okay? And so that's, uh, I think, important. Now, when did that, this book, the events in the book, uh, take place? Well, uh, th there are various uh, times that people suggest when it might have happened. Some say that uh, uh, the book of Job covers uh, uh, time during the time of Solomon. Some say that it was covering, uh, happening during the time of Moses. Some say it was earlier than that. I, I think that uh, most conservative uh, scholars uh, say that Job was a patriarch. We are aware of the fact that uh, there have been three dispensations of God's dealings with mankind. First of all, there was the patriarchal age. Patriarch means uh, father, father rule. And so God spoke to the people through the fathers, the family th through the fathers. And the fathers offered the sacrifices to Jehovah God. So God spoke to the families through the fathers. Patriarchy. Okay? Now that went from the time of creation to the time of the giving of the law of Moses. With the giving of the law of uh, Moses about 1500 B.C., from Mount Sinai, you had the beginning of the second age, the Mosaic age. So you have the patriarchal age from creation to the time of the giving of the law of Moses. Then you have the Mosaic age or the Mosaic dispensation from the time of the giving of the law of Moses till the death of Christ on the cross when the law of Moses was nailed to the cross. All right? Then 
Uh, we have been since the time of the cross and the day of Pentecost, we have been under the law of Christ, and it is called the Christian dispensation. And so many people say these events took place during the Mosaic Age, okay? Some of them date it late in the Mosaic Age. Some of them date it early in the Mosaic Age. It's my firm conviction that these things happened in the patriarchal age. If I were dating uh, Job and the events that happened in the book of Job, then I would put them in about uh, Genesis, somewhere around Genesis 10 and 11, before the time of Abraham. One reason why I do that is that uh, God has never left himself without a witness, Paul said, on the first missionary journey. And so you have Noah in the ark, and you, then you have Abraham, and so it seems to me that it was logical for Job to be between the two, somewhere not too far before uh, Abraham. Now, why would I date uh, Job as a patriarch? Well, number one, uh, he offered sacrifices for his children and his family. Uh, you'll notice in chapter 1 and verse uh, 5 that when the days of their feasting, the children's feasting, celebrating one of them's birthday, uh, anniversary, uh, went about that he set them apart, sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, and offered sacrifices for them all because he said, it may be that my sons have sinned and renounce God in their heart. Now please notice that here is Job the father offering sacrifices, animal sacrifices, on behalf of his children to Jehovah God because it may be that they have sinned and renounced God in their hearts. So notice that he was offering sacrifices for them. All right, in addition to that, Job's age indicates that he was a patriarch. Uh, Job uh, probably married uh, around age 20. He was married. The Bible tells us in chapter 1 and uh, verse 2 that he had seven sons and three uh, daughters. And so he had three uh, daughters and seven sons, ten children and all. And so notice that you have him married about uh, age 20. Then you give him time to, uh, for him and his wife to have about 10 uh, children, and so that would be about 10 years, 10 children, about 10 years. And so uh, here he is at age 30. Now, in addition to that, each one of them evidently had uh, a house, houses. And so you let the youngest one get grown. That would take uh, at least 20 years. And so when Job uh, was destroyed, he was at least uh, 60 years old. Might have been 70, might have been 80, something like this. And so uh, he was, by our standards today, he was kind of up in age when he was destroyed by Satan. Now, in addition to that, the Bible says, you will notice over in the latter part of chapter 42, the last uh, couple of verses, that Job lived after he was restored another 140 years, and notice he saw his sons and his son's sons and uh, his son's, uh, son's sons, in other words, even into four generations. He lived another 140 years. Uh, chapter 42 and verse 16. And then uh, four generations. And he died being old and full of days. Okay? So you allow him to be uh, 60 to 70 years of age, something like that. Then he was destroyed. Then after he was restored months later, then... Uh, he lived another 140 years after he was restored.
So you're talking about uh, well over 200 years, 60 plus 140, 200. All right, and uh, must have lived longer than that. Now, some people have wondered, and I've been one of them, if, uh, if Job, Job's age was doubled. In other words, did God double his age when he doubled uh, his sheep and his oxen and, and other things that he had that had been taken away from him? He doubled them. He doubled his children. And so uh, did he double his age also? Well, if so... Uh, Job would have been 70 years of age, half of 140, when he was destroyed. Now, I don't know that that's the case. I don't know that uh, God doubled Job's uh, age. Now, uh, but I do know that his age uh, compared very favorably with those of the patriarchs. For instance... Uh, Terah, the father of Abraham, lived to be 205 years old. Uh, Isaac lived, uh, how long? 175 years. And so uh, that seems to be indicate that he was a patriarch. Now, uh, back during the time of uh, the Mosaic Age, when it came about, well, the average age span was in the neighborhood of 70 uh, years and so he lived a lot longer than 70 to 80 uh, years old. All right, so uh, that indicates that he was a patriarch. In addition to that, uh, I want you to notice here when he was destroyed, chapter 1, verse 20 says, uh, when he had lost all of his possessions, then Job arose and rent his robe and shaved his head and fell upon his face, fell upon the ground, and worshipped. Now please notice that he arose, rent his royal-looking robe. That would be out of place for a person who had just lost everything he had, for now his being a pauper, royal-looking robe is a little out of place for that. So he rent his robe in uh, sorrow and and uh, regret, disappointment. And then the Bible says he shaved his head. And that would be as, as, as mor for mourning. He was mourning because he had lost everything, including his ten children. Now, in Deuteronomy 14, 1, uh, a part of the Mosaic covenant was, Mosaic law was, that the Jews were not to shave their heads as a sign of mourning like the nations round about them. Okay? Uh, because they had Jehovah God, and they were forbidden to do that. Now, Job must not have lived in the Mosaic age because uh, the Bible says that he shaved his head, and he was not... Uh, rebuked by Jehovah God. In fact, uh, verse 22 says, In all of this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. There are a number of other indications uh, that Job was a patriarch. His name uh, goes back to the time of Abraham. It was uh, appears often there in the Egyptian execration tablets in the Armana uh, writings and in other writings back there that date back to the time of Abraham. So the name Job was very well known back during the time of the patriarchy. In addition to that, the uh, writing, the words and the, uh, the, the Aramaisms that are found in this indicates that the book of Job was written in early Hebrew. Early Hebrew. It's not the uh, type Hebrew in which uh, Moses wrote or uh, Solomon wrote. Some people think Solomon wrote the book of Job, but uh, it's earlier uh, Hebrew uh, than that. 
In addition to that, there are no references to institutions of the Jews. For instance, you don't read about in the book of Job, you don't read about the giving of the law of Moses. You don't read about the deliverance out of Egypt. You don't read about the wilderness wanderings. You don't read about the tabernacle and such things as that, okay? Now, in addition, and, and, and if it had been after the giving of the law of Moses and these institutions were brought about that had to do with Judaism, it looks like that they would have been uh, mentioned. In addition to that, there is no formal priesthood. In uh, Job chapter 9, when Job is uh, crying out because of sorrow and because of uh, mistreatment, uh, he said uh, there is no umpire or mediator uh, betwixt us. And so evidently there was no formal priesthood uh, during his uh, day uh, that could handle these things. The very fact that uh, Job was uh, offering sacrifices and talking to God directly and this type of thing uh, in uh, chapters 38 through 41 and then 42 uh, it shows that, that Job, there was no formal priesthood, and Job was serving, as it were, as a priest. In addition to that, in uh, chapter 42, when Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar repented, uh, God told them to get Job to offer sacrifices for them all. And so they carried Job animals to, or, and pleaded with him to offer sacrifices for them that they might be, might be right in the sight of God. And so as a result of that, it seems that Job is serving in that position, as it were. No formal priesthood during the time of Job. If you would like to learn more about God's Word with a free Bible correspondence course, then write us at Truth For The World, P.O. Box 5048, Duluth, Georgia, 30096, the United States of America. Or visit us online at truthfortheworld.org. Truth For The World is a work of the Duluth Church of Christ in cooperation with churches of Christ throughout the world. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here.